Welcome to MacBreak Studio. Today we're talking about the new features in Final Cut Pro 10. Dot, wait, motion. Motion. We're actually motion. talking about motion. Yes. And uh, I've done a few Mac breaks on 360 VR editing in Final Cut, but motion has a whole set of tools for 360 editing. It does. And uh, Mark's going to show us what those are. It does. It very well complements the 360 tools in Final Cut and allows you to create. 360 titles and effects that you can then use in Final Cut. Yeah, I've, I've actually done it. It's really yes, it's great. Yes, you're all over it. So um, I want to show you a couple little tips about it. So when you start a new project under the presets, we have two new presets for 360 video. And you can choose one of those to get started, or you can just choose import as project, which I I'm going to do. I love that command so I love much. it too. And I'm going to select, I'll hit the space bar to see what I'm selecting. This is, oh, sorry about the audio. Let's turn that off. Uh, a 360, this is a 360 video uh, shot with a Nikon Key Mission 360 on Salt Key in Belize. And you can see some stitch lines, which is one issue of that. And if you don't know about stitch lines and, and how to deal with them, you need to get Steve's 360. I might have to give him a plug because this, Steve covers his stuff in great detail about shooting 360 video. Anyway, I'm going to import that as a project. I don't need to look at the uh, timeline, so I'll get rid of that, and I'll move the playhead a little more forward in time. And this gets interesting. Look what's happening here. So in the left-hand side, in the layers list, we have this thing. It's a new group type called a 360 environment group. So just, just to stop here, because yeah. you imported that clip, and Motion immediately recognized it, it knew. as a 360 because of its equirectangular rectangular yes. uh, property. Yes, it knew it was an equirectangular 360 clip, so it created this 360 environment group which it would have done if I had selected the preset. Sure. And then we've got these two viewports. And if I click up here where you choose your viewports, it's automatically set to two. I'm gonna go back to one for just a minute because I wanna show you that um, one of them is called the overview and I'll hit shift Z to fit it to the window. So this is the full equa rectangular view that we saw when we just you know did a quick look right. in the finder. Mm -hmm. So um, we can see that and uh, those seams are just so obvious in this camera. That's why it's good to have more lenses and more resolution to work with, but um, it's kind of a cool shot. And then you can choose this, use the same camera menu here to choose this look around view. Notice these keyboard shortcuts, these are really helpful. So look around, control V will then allow me, and see what I just did? I tried to click and drag on the viewer. Well, just like, well, you expect it to work that way, because Final Cut it does, works It like does that. in Final Cut, but in motion, the orbit tool is up here, and it is, it's always been up there for regular well, it conforms working to the, 3D. Well, it conforms to the motion UI. Right, but it's confusing when you're going back and forth. So here I can look around. Um, you're looking around. Yeah, I can look around, and if I double click it, it'll reset. Now, this default view is not really good. I'm gonna go back to these two viewports, look around, and 3D overview, so and Shift Z to fit that in the view there. So the first thing I want to do is fix the fact that my default orientation is wrong because I didn't pay attention to Steve's tutorial and set up my <laughs> camera with True North right. correctly. So I'll select this video clip and under filters, there's a new 360 category and there's one lonely filter in there, mm -hmm. which you're probably familiar if you watch any Steve stuff, 360 reorient. So if I bring up the heads up display, I can pan to move my shot over, I could move it over there, and if I wanted to, I could tilt it up, say, yeah. say like that. And now that's my default orientation. Yep. So now if I orbit the camera around, but I double click it, it'll start there. Nice. And that means if somebody's watching the video on a headset or wherever they watch it, they'll see this first, okay? So I've got it in here, but so far you could all do all that in Final Cut, yep. okay? So what's so special about my motion? Well, <laughs> I can add text. You can add text in Final Cut as well, but you can create your own custom 360 titles. And just to give a quick idea of that, I'll click T for the text tool and type, this is my son here, Elliot. So I'll type Elliot and then scale that up. And I can also use the Q key to get the 3D transform tool and I can move this up and down and left and right, right. and forward and backwards in Z space and I could change its angle, you know, anything I want and that will stick to the scene right there. Yep since the camera isn't moving, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's one option, and I can animate that, I could make it 3D, I can do a lot of very interesting things, but we'll talk about that in another episode. Another thing I can do is add effects, in particular, particle effects. Yep. And I, I know you've experienced with this as well. So I'm gonna go to the library and go to particle emitters, and I'm gonna search for uh, rain. Because it's a beautiful sunny day, why not ruin it? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I'm gonna take this one called Rain Streaks, 
and throw it in this group. And I'll also extend it so it lasts to the end of the project. And we have this tiny little yeah. thing going on right here, which isn't really what we want. I'm gonna close the heads-up display. So to make this work properly, a couple things I need to do. With the, in the emitter controls itself, I'll make that emitter 3D. And I'll say that the shape, instead of a rectangle, I'll make it a sphere, okay? Now, how big a sphere? Well, we're working with UHD video, which is 3840, so 3860, 3840 by 1920. It's gotta be the two to one yeah. ratio, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna increase that sphere to around, uh, it's a radius, not a, not a diameter, so half of it's like, uh, you know, 1800, 1900, but I'm gonna go a little bigger than that just so it covers, make sure it covers everything. And now I need to make a few more changes. I'm gonna have, turn off face camera so each piece of rain does not turn to face the camera. These are rain streaks. I'll increase the birth rate. I'll increase their life so they last longer. And I'll also change the color. Right now they're not very visible. I really Should want make them a to purple, pop. like purple rain or something. Exactly. Oh, wait, <laughs> Sounds like you knew something about nice. my tutorial. <laughs> purple rain, exactly. Let's make purple rain. Uh. <laughs> An homage That's to pink Fritz. rain, but whatever. And I'll, oh, okay, all right, that better. There we go. Purple rain. Pur now okay. it's purple rain. Now, and I'll scale these things up too. We can start to see them. Yeah. In the shot here. So now, if I orbit the camera around, something's still not white, right? Yeah, right. If I look only, up, they're not there. Yeah. Where are they? I'll double click that. So the reason is, and this is a little bit of a gotcha. If I select the camera, and I look at the properties of the camera in its position, the camera is set back in Z-space. Mm -hmm. Now that doesn't affect the, the video in this 360 environment at all. Moving the camera around here, look, has no impact on that. It does have an impact on the particles. So what I'm gonna do is take those rain streaks and move them to make sure they're in front of the camera. So right now, it's, when I threw them in there, I just kind of put a random yeah. number on there. I'm gonna put like 5,300 so they're in front of the camera. So now if I turn I can see them, and it looks like I need to put them a little bit more in front of the camera, about like that. So now they're in every direction, everywhere I turn. A better way to see this is if I turn off the 360 clip and play a little bit, we can see the rain falling there. If I look up in the sky, we can see the rain falling straight down at us. Yep. And if I look down at the ground, we, we're now we're looking at down on the ground and the rain is falling down. So we turn the video back on, we see that. That's great. So now we have um, this 360 rain completely surrounding all parts of the 360 environment. So one thing you can do with that, you could turn off the video and publish this uh, as, as a template right. to, to Final Cut okay. and you've got rain that you can add to any 360 video. Yeah. And I do that in my tutorial. It's actually really easy to do. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So but we're not going to tell you how to do it in this yeah. episode. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but you cover a lot more yeah. detail. Yeah. A lot more detail. I just wanted to give a quick idea of the of the idea of the viewports, the look around camera, the three D environment group, yeah. and being aware of where that camera is when you're putting elements yeah. in there. It's the, the the layer order is really important. Yeah. So uh, very exciting about some of the things super, you can do super in motion. Cool. Awesome. Well, thanks for showing us, uh, giving a uh, purple rain tour of. Uh, of Motion 360 capabilities. And uh, check out his full color grading tutorial and my VR tutorial that's up on our site. And uh, check us out on the usual social media places. So thanks for watching another episode of Mac Break Studio. We'll see you next time.